Thank you, Chris. And thank you, Sharon, Rosie, and Blythe. Oh, man. And thanks all of you guys for coming tonight. Oh. Uh, yeah. So wonderful. I want to thank Phil at Lincoln Center for uh, honoring me with the Chaplain Award this evening. Uh, it's so wonderful to be recognized by an organization that's done so much for Phil. And uh, I want to thank everyone who uh, gave their time and talent tonight. Let's give them a little hand. Uh, uh, and Chris, it's so bizarre, man. You know, uh, as, you know, when I said at the end of Hell or High Water that uh, I'd, see, I'd see you again, I didn't think you would be here <laughs> at the Lincoln Center. Very bizarre. Oh, but I am here, and uh, this has brought up all kinds of uh, stuff for me. Uh, like, what am I doing here? You know, what am I doing up on this stage tonight? What, what got me here? And um, two words come to mind, luck and love. Yeah, and uh, both the luck and love started with the bed that I was born into. I'm talking about Lloyd and Dorothy Bridges' bed. Yeah. Dorothy, you know, you've heard a bit about her tonight, but she was uh, probably the best actor in our family. And uh, she also uh, was so encouraging to all her kids to be creative, you know, to put on plays on holidays and birthdays. And she also understood the deeper, more challenging aspects of play. For instance, when I was a bit older, going off to work, you know, nervous and anxious, she'd call me over and say, Jeff, remember, have fun. And don't take it too seriously, yeah? And now my wife, Sue, she'll send me off to work with those same words because I still get nervous and anxious, man. You know, uh, both my parents, they were so gung-ho uh, about acting, unlike a lot of other parents in showbiz, they encouraged all their kids to get into it. Um, back in the 60s, my dad had this TV series called Sea Hunt. Yes? Mike Nelson, yeah. And I can remember him, you know, saying to me, Hey, Jeff, you want to come to work with Dad? Come on. You get to get out of school? Come on, we'll have fun. And I did a few of them. And uh, you see this little chubby eight-year-old kid on Sea Hunt. That's me. And Dad, he'd sit me on his bed, you know, teach me all the basics of acting. But the big lesson that I got from him was the way he approached it with such joy. And uh, that joy, it was contagious. He'd step on a set, and it would spread through the cast and crew like wildfire. You know, people would relax, realize, oh, yeah, hey, what we're doing is kind of fun. Let's enjoy it. And that relaxed atmosphere would allow the, you know, the best work to come. Uh, the muse, uh, she can have her way with you, you know, when we're relaxed, right? But... I resisted. I really, uh, I really did. I wasn't sure I wanted to get into this whole acting thing, you know. And like I said, it made me nervous, anxious, you know. And I had other things I wanted to do. I was very much into music, loved ceramics, painting, and you know, uh, who wants to do what their parents want them to do anyway, right? So I wasn't sure I wanted to get into it. And Dad says to me, Jeff, come on. Don't be ridiculous. If you're an actor, you get to do all those, those things that you're interested in. You'll get to use them all. And that's, that's one of the beauties about acting, Jeff. Ah, Dad, he did everything uh, to encourage me. You know, he, he loved acting, loved playing with all the other artists, the telling of stories, you know, stories of what it's like to be alive, of living in other people's shoes, getting to express all these different points of view. And he loved all the aspects of showbiz, 
relating to his fans, you know, signing autographs, the promoting of movies, yeah, the, the publicity. You know, he loved publicizing things, things that you want to bring attention to, things that need attention, like ending hunger or the care of our planet, you know. Yeah. <laughs> doing, doing your part to create the kind of world you want to live in, you want your kids and grandkids and all of us to live in. Uh, you know, he, you can be a, a uh, well, he didn't say this, uh, but I think he would have dug the idea of being an influencer. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's what we all are anyway, isn't it? You know, influencers, influencing the way it is now and how it could be. Yeah, my mom and dad, they turned me on uh, not only to showbiz, but to the notion that I can make a difference. And I... Uh, I really, really thank him for that. And I took him up on it, too. But still, even after Dad's wise and wonderful advice, his acting pitch, you know, it took me, oh, about 10, 10 films before I decided to make acting my career. Yeah. Now, not so with Brother Bo. He took to it much faster. He's another reason I'm up here tonight. I'm lucky to have a big brother like Bo, who is my teacher and, well, my brother, my best friend, you know, doing uh, Baker Boys with Bo. <laughs> it was such a dream. Oh, we had such fun. We'd have lunch together every day, and we'd just pinch ourselves, saying, you know, can you believe what we get to do? This is so amazing. Oh, man. Yeah, family. That's the start of the whole thing. I'm so lucky in the family department. And the love department, my wife, Sue, and our kids, Isabel, Jesse, and Haley, they are definitely the reason I'm up here tonight. I couldn't make any of those movies without their love and support. They, uh, they ought to be on the credits of the movies I do. You know, they really should. Those end credits, you know. All those people, isn't that amazing? You know, with different points of view, different political, spiritual views, they all come together and make something beautiful. Pull off a one-time magic trick. I love that. Yeah. And I, I love it when you, uh, you go into a movie with high expectations. I know I always do. And then you have those high expectations transcended. You know, when the movie turns out more amazing than you ever thought possible. Yeah, I love that. It's, uh, it's that kind of emergent behavior thing, you know, the sum equals more than the parts. It's, uh, it's well, it's real magic. And um, it happens, not every time, but enough. I mean, that's what keeps me coming back, uh, doing more of them. Uh, but I told you that um, I resisted, you know, being an actor for a long time. And a lot of that resistance... Um, had to do with my addiction to uh, comfort. I really don't like uh, being uncomfortable <laughs> and acting. Well, it would make you feel that way, you know. Sometimes it's hard, it's not easy, you know, and that feeling of not being good enough. Oh, I didn't dig that, man. It was a terrible feeling. It took many movies before I decided to make a career of it. And here's the moment that it happened. I had just finished shooting uh, The Last American Hero, a movie about a race car driver, had a great time. But after making a movie, I often feel like not making another one for a while, you know. I just want to do some other stuff, uh, be who I really am, you know. I get tired of pretending. So I get this call from my agent who tells me, Jeff, you've been offered The Iceman Cometh a movie version of the great Eugene O'Neill play directed by John Frankenheimer, starring Frederick March, Lee Marvin, and Robert Ryan. And I say, oh, gee, Jack, uh, tell him thanks, but I I'm Bush, man. I, I need a break. And he says, really? And I say, yeah, I'm Bush. He says, okay, he hangs up. About five minutes later, Lamont Johnson, the director, 
of The Last American Hero, he calls me and he says, I heard you turned down the Iceman Cometh. I said, yeah, Monty, I'm bushed. And he says, you're bushed, you're an ass. And he hangs up on me. So I decide to do a little experiment on myself. I do that from time to time, you know, experiment on myself. I thought, okay, I'm going to do this movie when I don't feel like it. I, I, I've been wondering if I'm uh, cut out for this acting thing, you know, and if the experience proves to be too much of a drag, well, it'll be the final nail in the acting coffin, you know. So, I do the movie, and it turns out to be an incredible experience. Most of my scenes were with the wonderful actor Robert Ryan, and we had this long 10-minute scene across a table, and after the first take, Bob takes his hands off the table, and I see these big puddles of sweat, and I say, gee, Bob, after all these years of doing this, you're still nervous? And he says, oh, yeah. He says, if I wasn't nervous, well, then I'd really be scared. That, uh, that uh, doesn't go away, Jeff. And that kind of floored me. You know, it was the same with Frederick March and Lee Marvin. All those guys were struggling to do their best, to do justice to the material, you know, live up to the opportunity. And the idea that these masters had the same struggles that I was going through, you know, had flop sweat, made me think, hmm, yeah, well, maybe I can do this, you know, have the fear and do it anyway. You know, these guys did. Why? Why did they do it? Well, because they loved it, right? Like my dad said, it's wonderful playing with other artists, telling incredible stories. And these old masters, they loved what they were getting to do, loved the risks that they were getting to take. You know, Dad, <laughs> he was right. I'm glad I listened to the old man. I got to say, I'm really digging it too, you know. <laughs> and uh, Dad, thank you. You were right, man. You too, Mama. Yeah. That, uh, that feeling of nervousness and fear, you know, being afraid you're not going to be able to pull it off. Hey, you know, if you take risks, and it feels so, so good to take them and learn that you can do stuff that you didn't think you could, you know, if you, if you do things outside your box, this kind of stuff is bound to come up. These two things, love and fear, they aren't going away. They're with us. And it's funny, they kind of work together, I find, you know, sort of polish us, you know. Yeah, I dig that, they, you know, being polished by fear and love. Yeah. Mom and Dad, uh, they're the reason I'm up here, big reason. You know, Dad's joy and Mom's send-off. Remember, Jeff, have fun. And don't take it too seriously. Yeah, that too, that word too, that's the secret. That's the most important part. Well, tonight, I've had fun, and uh, I haven't taken it too seriously. <laughs> but I have taken it sincerely, and I so appreciate this honor, this, this acknowledgement. It feels so wonderful. And so I leave you with this. May you all be as lucky and as loved as you've made me feel tonight. Thank you guys so much. Love this.